Hey everybody, hope you guys are healthy and safe. So I've been using the iPhone 16 Pro Max nonstop for about 10 days now. And before that, I was daily driving the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL. So in today's video, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison between these two. Focusing on cameras a lot, obviously, because that's my thing. But also, you know, looking at everything else, like the total package, just for people who may be considering a new phone right now and see which one they may want to get. So let's look at the overall hardware first. So the iPhone 16 Pro Max has a slightly larger screen, 6.9 inches to the Pixel's 6.8 inches. But the two phones almost feel exactly the same size. Google really borrowed a lot of design language from the iPhone this year. Like the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL, at it, if you don't put your finger on the camera visor, it just feels like an iPhone Pro Max. The Pixel screen is a little bit higher res and the Pixel screen also gets brighter at 3000 nits maximum, whereas the iPhone gets only up to 2000. But human eyes do not see nits linearly. So even though 3000 sounds a lot higher than 2000, like to be honest, in real life, the two screens look about the same brightness to me. And in fact, the iPhone screen is consistently brighter because iPhone's auto brightness just defaults to a higher brightness level. But technically speaking, on a spec sheet, Pixel 9 Pro XL gets brighter. But then the iPhone screen gets dimmer, as low as one nit. Whereas the Pixel, like Google did not reveal it, but it does not get as low as one nit. As for how the displays are calibrated, generally speaking, the Pixel display is cooler compared to the iPhone. And you definitely notice that when you watch videos side by side but both of these are excellent screens. When it comes to construction, both of these phones are pretty premium, but I think the iPhone gets the edge because its frame is crafted out of titanium compared to aluminum on the Pixel 9 Pro XL. I also don't like how the Pixel 9 Pro XL's frame, it's glossy and attracts fingerprints, whereas on the iPhone, it's completely matte. The Pixel is a little bit thicker at 8.5 millimeter to the iPhone's 8.3, but then the iPhone is a little bit heavier at 227 grams to the Pixel's 221. But like I said, man, the in-hand feel between the two phones are almost virtually identical. Now the Pixel has doubled the RAM at 16 gigs to the iPhone's eight gigs, but this really doesn't matter because the iPhone has never really been about how many gigs of RAM and the iPhone is a faster phone than the Pixel 9 Pro XL. That's because the iPhone's chip, the A18 Pro, is significantly more powerful than the Tensor G4 in the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL. Now, the iPhone chip being more powerful than Android chips is nothing new, but the gap between the iPhone chip and the Tensor is particularly wide, like because, you know, like a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is also not as powerful as the A18 Pro, but the difference doesn't really matter that much in real life. But the Tensor, it's actively slower than every other chip out there. And this is noticeable when you're editing videos. So I do, I shoot a lot of videos and I usually trim them before I post them on Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. When you trim a video and you save on an iPhone, it saves immediately. When you do the exact same action on a Pixel, you have to wait five seconds, sometimes seven, eight seconds. Now, is this a deal breaker? No, it is not. I happily used this phone for like three weeks and didn't really, was not really that frustrated by it, but it still matters, right? Like this phone does it in, 0.1 seconds this phone takes like seven seconds in terms of battery size the pixel battery it's a little bit bigger too but again this doesn't really matter because apple silicon is so much more efficient the iphone 16 pro max definitely has better battery life than the pixel 9 pro xl but no matter what if you are a very very heavy user who shoots a lot of videos and play a lot of games both of these phones will run out of juice before your day ends so a portable battery is key and i have a very good one from today's sponsor Sarge. So this is the Carbon Mag 5K and Carbon Mag 10K. Both of these chargers are crafted out of a single unibody piece of carbon fiber. So not only is it more stylish, it's also lighter and also better for the environment compared to plastic. Both of these are MagSafe chargers, so they will snap onto the iPhone perfectly. Now the Google Pixel also has magnets on the back, so it can also snap onto the Pixel too, but it does not stay in place as tightly, but still it is perfectly usable even on the Pixel. The Carbon Mag 5K is also the slimmest 5,000 milliamp hour battery that I've seen yet. It measures only 0.35 inches or about 8.9 millimeters 
kilos and it weighs 0 0.26 pounds or about 117 grams. Now the 10K is obviously thicker and heavier, but it also supports Qi too. So it charges faster and also can power up your devices at up to 20 watt with a wired cable. Both of these chargers are available for purchase now on Sarge's website. There are always special deals, so check out the link in the description below to get the latest prices. Next up, let's look at software. Both phones disappoint me this year. So the Pixel ships with Android 14 out of the box, not the upcoming Android 15. I mean, I know that Android 15 is not out yet, but we're used to Pixel shipping with the latest version of Android out of the box, and that is not the case this year. As for the iPhone, it ships with iOS 18 out of the box, but it does not have Apple Intelligence inside. Apple Intelligence is coming later in 18.1 via a software update. So basically, both of these phones are shipping with software that are not the best representation of what Google and Apple have to offer. You have to wait a month to get that software update. Both phone software are very big on AI, obviously, but this is one area where Google completely wins because the Pixel 9 Pro XL ships with most of the advertised AI features ready to go. So this includes a live translation, voice dictation, circle to search, very useful generative AI photo editing, and also reimagine, which allows you to type in a couple of voice prompts to create an almost original chunk of an image. iPhone, on the other hand, has Apple Intelligence, which has been much hyped, but Apple Intelligence is not ready yet in the phone out of the box. You have to either download the beta version software or wait until next month to get iOS 18.1 just to try Apple Intelligence. And on top of that, I've already tried Apple Intelligence, at least in beta form, and it does not seem to be as smart as Google's AI. That should not be a surprise because Google's AI is quite ahead of where Apple is at right now. So if generative AI is one of the very important things you care about, then the Pixel definitely wins this round. Next up, let's look at a camera. So both of these cameras hardware actually did not change too much from last year's phones. The main cameras are basically neck and neck here in terms of hardware. So you have a 48 megapixel f1.8 shooter here, 50 megapixel f1.7 on the Pixel. The sensor size are almost identical. The iPhone is slightly larger, 1 over 1.28 compared to 1 over 1.3 here. Both ultra-wide cameras are now 48 megapixel. This is an improvement for the iPhone because last year it was 12 megapixel. As for zoom lens, both phones have a 5x telephoto zoom. Using similar technology on the Google Pixel, it's a traditional periscope lens. On the iPhone, it's a prism zoom, which is similar to a periscope zoom lens anyway. Both of these zoom lens are f2.8 aperture, but the Pixel has a slightly larger image sensor at 1 over 2.5 compared to 1 over 3 inches right here. Looking at photo samples, the main camera is pretty much neck and neck. Both of these main cameras are very good and they also do a very good 2x in sensor crop to give you a little bit of a tighter focal length. I do want to mention that the iPhone has a new thing this year called photographic styles, which is completely customizable and allows you to basically change the color profiles of the iPhone camera. But I really like that I can now make the shadows a little bit deeper, bring out the tones a little bit, add back a little bit more contrast in the shots. Now, I know photographic style is actually not new. Apple introduced it like two years ago, but two years ago, they were just very basic filters. This year, it seems like a complete overhaul and Apple says it completely analyzes the photos, depth maps, all of that to provide more realistic shadows. To be honest, it reminds me of what Xiaomi and Oppo and Vivo have been doing with their cameras because they've been putting out cameras with a little bit more realistic tones, deeper shadows, you know, inspired by Leica, uh, Hasselblad and Zeiss. And I'm happy to see iPhones going in this direction because on a Pixel, you don't have as, as much control over the look of your photos. Yeah, you can make photos a little bit darker, brighter, exposure, all that. But for the most part, the color science of Pixel phones are always cooler. That's just something Google decided on. When it comes to the 5X zoom lens, I do think the Pixel tends to be a little bit ahead, probably because the Periscope zoom lens is still a little bit, probably because the Pixel zoom lens has a larger image sensor. Now, when it comes to video performance, much closer than I expected, because usually the iPhone's video performs much better than the Pixel, but the Pixel's 
video performance has improved a lot this year so it's pretty close if you're just shooting with the main camera but the iphone is much smoother when you're switching between lenses and the iphone has more tricks like it can shoot at 4k 120 and the iphone also has this new thing called audio mix that allows you to filter out audio now you can do that on a pixel 2 it's magic eraser but i think it works a little bit better on the iphone because the iphone has better microphones than the pixel so when it comes to video i do have to give the edge to the iphone so yeah that's about it for this video comparing the iphone 16 pro max against the google pixel 9 pro xl both of these are really really good and it really depends on what you want if you want ai features then it's the pixel if you want a more free ecosystem then it's still the pixel if you want better video recording it's the iphone if you want better accessories like magsafe charges that actually sticks onto the back of the phone then it is the iphone so yeah that's about it for this video i hope you enjoyed this content if you did please consider subscribing to my channel it will help me a lot thanks for watching